thì em chỉ chuẩn bị uh, chuẩn bị slide bằng tiếng Anh cho nên xin phép uh, mọi người cho phép em trình bày bằng tiếng Anh ạ. Thì okay, so um, so hello everyone again. So here I just want to be share some of my my own humble experience regarding developing my area of research and that uh, includes the, the lessons that I have learned and what I think are important in uh, developing my own career. So first, uh, just a bit introduction about my, my journey of research. Really, I just want to reiterate what Professor Duke and Professor Chung mentioned before regarding invading other fields, because exactly that's what I, I did in my journey. So I first started as a researcher and also a, a leader of an IND group at the um, Vietnam um, uh, National uh, Post and Telecom Corporation. So I was working at that time on developing the voice of the IP switch for systems to help Vietnamese people to have the low cost uh, calls abroad. These systems were used in the VNPT network as a part of their uh, mode by mode service, if you still remember the, the voice of the IP call. So at that time, it's the technology, uh, it, it was a very early day and none, the technology was not used very much, but nowadays it's been used in um, basically every uh, video conference tools like Zoom that we're using now, or WhatsApp or Teams or Skype, et cetera. We were one of the pioneers in this technology at that time. I was also a member of the study group within the International Telecommunication Union. At that time, to formalize the standards behind different voice of IP protocols and technology at that time. And then uh, I went to the UK and then started my first research degree and then a PhD thanks to the scholarship both funded by UK government as well as the University of Birmingham. So it was interesting trying out some things very different to the applied research in telecoms that I did before uh, in Vietnam. Uh, uh, so that was optimization modeling and uh, algorithm development and uh, basically uh, this was basic research. But then after I finished my PhD, I started uh, initial postdoc again in basic research in the same area that I did with my PhD. But then I really wanted to, to find ways to apply what I learned to the real world straight away. Uh, so I found an opportunity uh, in Liverpool John Marsh University to apply optimization modeling to robot vehicles in the port. So uh, it's a big vehicle that carry containers and they are totally automatic. And they were going to make a real robot vehicle as well to test in the port. So that excited me quite a lot. I decided to join that project at uh, LGMU as a research fellow. So my research at that time was combination of both basic research and applied research and in two different areas, you can see here. Uh, and then I became a, a lecturer and then a reader a couple of years later and further developed my research groups and research areas now combining both basic and applied research and covering a wider range of applications. And then I took more responsibility to become a co-director of my current research institute and also became a professor uh, with a, a wider range of research and applications again. So really just a kind of uh, journey that uh, I have gone through. And again, I, I just would want to uh, reiterate the importance of uh, trying to be multidisciplinary and try to kind of invite the other field and try to look for opportunities from the other. So with a view to explore collaborations, opportunities with friends and colleagues in the VIS, uh, please allow me to just very briefly introduce my research institute. So my institute is called the Legal Logistic Offshore Marine Research Institute, uh, or LOOM for short. And it is uh, quite small. Uh, I think it's quite active in the area of transportation research and maritime. With a history of maritime studies since uh, 1892 with the name of Liverpool Nautical College. We are also quite active at the moment with about 33 ongoing externally funded uh, projects. And it is ranked uh, number one in terms of number of SCI publications in the areas of uh, maritime risk, maritime safety, decision making and risk assessment. So this word cloud here, basically, I just picked it from uh, the annual report of our research institute in uh, 2018, so quite outdated, but this guy still show the areas we have been working on now. So I, I led a research group within that uh, research institute this called some smart green things. And uh, these are some details about my group really for us to explore any collaboration opportunities in the future. Uh, the information is quite outdated in my apologies about, you know, two years ago, uh, well, less than about well, one year and a half. Um, but hopefully it gives you an idea. And the areas that we have been working on as mentioned by Professor Huen, 
uh, include optimization, uh, simulation, data analytics, machine learning, IoT, uh, web, mobile, and uh, cloud applications. So a bit more details about my group does for potential collaborations. Um, so working together, my group has de delivered uh, to the real world a number of different products in a number of different areas. And that's the reason why I want to, to, to start my, my group in the first place. So you can see this is one of the areas that we have been working on in uh, port operations. And this is also the area that we have collaborated quite extensively with Vietnamese partners in the past. Um, so on the right, basically, they are the, the screenshots of, um, and in the, in the next few slides, there's a screenshot of the real software that we developed or the picture of the actual product itself in the physical hardware, and they are all being used by the real world industries, the partners at the moment. So you can see the on to the left here would be the different applications that, that we have uh, developed. Um, so the next one is maritime shipping, and here we focus on helping shipping companies with different applications as seen here. And again, on the right hand side, uh, the screenshot of the real products that we deliver to them. Uh, another related area is logistic and warehousing. You can see here again some applications I won't go into detail. One area that we are working quite actively uh, at the moment is sustainable travel, because I'm really keen on keeping the earth sustainable. So we have been uh, supporting a lot of uh, activities on public transportation, especially rail and metro, uh, working with rail operators in industry in the UK, and they are using them at the moment, as you can see here. Another um, area that's also quite related to uh, sustainable travel um, is uh, active travel and air quality. So we do a lot of research on this one to promote active travel. Um, so this includes uh, IoT sensors, cloud applications, machine learning, and also mobile app and data analytics and well, journey planning for uh, say bike delivery and things like that. Uh, we have also done many other works, especially in uh, math and simulation modeling. Uh, with real application. And one of these work was to help uh, a big car manufacturer here in the region. So that uh, I think fit quite well with, with the, um, the vision and the importance of manufacturing in the UK, as Professor Dick mentioned earlier. And uh, we also have done some work on modeling to help um, rail stations, buildings, and clinics understanding and dealing with COVID uh, more effectively. So that really was a, a brief introduction about my work. Now, if I may, I would also like to share with you some of my humble experience in developing uh, my independent research directions and how I applied my research to the real world. So I think uh, the first thing is important, I think, is really is to, to have the right environment. So I, I think I was very lucky to have the right environment to grow, both in University of Birmingham, where I did my PhD, as well as here in the Vermont University. And I feel I received uh, an excellent level of support from departments. I have some flexibility uh, to develop my own research and I have moderate level of teaching. But I do have to emphasize that, you know, at least in the UK, at least in um, some universities in the UK, one would need to earn these first three bullet points. So early career researchers would need to prove that they have potential. Uh, evidenced by excellent papers like Professor Chung mentioned before. Um, they should provide evidence of, I think, attracting at least moderate amount of funding and also good research impact. Again, things that Professor Dick and Professor Chung have mentioned. And once a researcher has been able to demonstrate this potential, I think it would be much easier for them to negotiate with supports. And I think that's, uh, that's what Professor Chung mentioned regarding his fellowship. And I think that's a great way to start your career and then having this kind of that takes that four bullet points that I, I mentioned here. I actually didn't think about uh, applying for research fellowships before, but certainly if I were to start again, probably certainly I would follow Professor Jung's advice and, and try to do that because I think it would be really beneficial for my career rather than having to try to manage on my own and try to get funding from uh, on my own to be able to support my research and my research group. So, um, and then uh, I would like to share a little bit regarding also to uh, about developing uh, my own research group. So my thought on what is important in my case at least is first, um, I want to emphasize that to develop a group, you need a team. 
and in the UK at least, in order to build a team, you need funding. So that really is the key. And Professor Dick and Professor Jung has already mentioned a lot about the funding landscape. I'm not going into detail, but I think really that is something that we we really need to pay attention to. Need to work hard. And as Professor Jung mentioned, you know, failures is, is very common. But if you keep trying, we should be able to uh, to gain some success. If you don't try, like Professor Dick mentioned, and Professor Jung mentioned, if you don't try, you would not get anything. And uh, also, equally important, I think, is having collaborations and connections with the community. Uh, Professor um, Dick mentioned that before, and Professor Chung as well. You normally would not get funding and support, at least in the UK, without collaborations nowadays. And speaking about collaboration, I also would like to express my gratitude to Professor Dick uh, while he's here. Uh, he has supported myself and my group a lot during my short research journey as well. But thank you very much, Professor Dick. Uh, and I think also, like, um, the previous three speakers mentioned, I think having good planning is also very useful and getting involved in uh, the research excellence framework, like Professor Chung mentioned before, uh, preparation and contribution to, to REF is also very important. And all these would help increase your profile and help you to develop your own research group, in my opinion. And finally, I think the most important thing really is to be passionate, like uh, the previous professor has mentioned, if you're passionate about it, I think you will be able to get it. So the next slide is about uh, sustaining my research group, my experience. So I think it is challenging to build a research group, but in my experience, it is even more challenging to sustain that research group, especially for early career researchers. But to do that, uh, like myself, first I would need to, um, to find continuous funding, I, I have had to try really hard to continue streams of income uh, to be able to keep my team together because even if I got funding, if the funding is not continuous, it means that I would lose the person that I have trained for so many years and they would go somewhere else and I would need to train the new people again. That's really important. That's, that's definitely the challenge in the current funding landscape. And I think that's why collaboration and, and you know, multidisciplinary uh, research and collaboration would be very important and useful. It also be useful, I think, to encourage your team to work together with yourself, or with myself in my case, I lead to certain activity rather than just doing it on my own. And again, I think planning is key and the passion, you need to keep the passion to be able to keep things going. Because as Professor Chung mentioned before, you know, working in academic is, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of stress as well. And you need to be able to feel uh, passionate about it and you really need to like it you want to continue in the in the academic career otherwise I think it might be better to go out and work in industry because it might be easier at least for my case to apply the, the things that I have done uh, to the real world if I work in a company for example in my experience so that brings us to I think uh, my final slide it is about uh, my experience of applying my research to the real world you, get, you have seen in my previous slides that I have got a lot of different applications working with a lot of different industry partners. So I think the, the key here is, again, I think we need to start from somewhere. So we need to get funding. And for this kind of collaborations, the industry, funding from industries themselves would be great if you can have it. Otherwise, um, relevant funding could be from Innovate UK, KTP, uh, Royal Academy of Engineering, not for the work itself, but as Professor did mention, is really to get some industry people to join you, to join your research institute and work with you and explore opportunities. And as Professor did mention, um, there are certain EPSSC programs that have to focus on industry applications. So uh, with certain priorities, they could also be quite useful. And having a close relationship with industry, again, I think is also really, really important. Uh, you need to build a bridge connect between your research and potential environments in the real world. Uh, and in my experience, I think it's very important to be able to convince the uh, industry of your unique selling points and how your unique selling point gives them the competitive edge. And if you could do that, then they probably would open up and after um, a, a long period of discussion and proof of concept study, maybe they would be able to invest in, in your research. And I think um, finally, I think establishing a business model, having a partnership with commercial entity, I think it's really crucial. Professor Chung mentioned about uh, spin our company before and again, 
um, my experience, I haven't actually been involved with spin out company, but my experience is working with industry and commercialization. It's a, it's a very time consuming process. And sometimes working in university, basically, there's no way to actually do that effectively and in a timely manner. Because the function of university, after all, is doing teaching and research. So that is really something, you know, for, for thought if you want to apply your research to the real world, maybe having some kind of partnership with some commercial entities might be a better way to do it. And in any case, I think having the good skill or develop this good skill in project management and also industry experience would be quite important. So uh, that's all from me. Uh, so những cái slides vừa qua là một số cái chia sẻ của, của bản thân em về cái lĩnh vực nghiên cứu của bản thân em và một số cái kinh nghiệm nhỏ để phát triển được nghiên cứu. Thì hy vọng là những cái nội dung này có thể giúp à, góp phần gợi mở khả năng hợp tác của các anh chị em à, và các thầy cô thành viên trong hội. Và hy vọng cung cấp một số thông tin cho các bạn muốn phát triển sự nghiệp nghiên cứu của bản thân. Thì bản thân em thì cũng rất là mong muốn là mình có thể khai phá tìm hiểu thêm những lĩnh vực của các anh chị em và thành viên trong hội và tìm hiểu thêm những cái lĩnh vực mà chúng ta có thể cùng hợp tác với nhau. Và anh cũng rất là sẵn lòng hỗ trợ các bạn thành viên trong hội cho các bạn có câu hỏi đặc biệt các bạn trẻ để các bạn có những câu hỏi là cần hỗ trợ về phát triển lâu dài. Một lần nữa xin cảm ơn à, giáo sư vấn và ban chấp hành viết các anh chị em à, đã thu xếp thực hiện buổi hội thảo rất bổ ích này. Xin cảm ơn tất cả mọi người ạ. Rất cảm ơn Thành. À, rất là những chia sẻ à, rất là bổ ích cho cho hội cho cho và cho các thành viên. Yeah. Và như vậy là again nếu mà các bạn có câu hỏi cho tất cả speaker thì có lẽ là chúng ta đành phải nốt lại để về phía sau vậy để 